Uh, so you join me somewhere in Banbury, and behind me I have the new BMW M5. Um, it looks incredible. I'll show you a full shot of it, because you're right now you're just seeing my face. As I spin the camera around, there it is, the brand new BMW M5, slightly larger than the previous generation. So this car is three meters in length, but the previous one was 2.9. It is way more aggressive. You have the wonderful, iconic kidney grill that glows up when you unlock the car. I have the key somewhere in my pocket. There we go. That just looks menacing. So when you're driving on the M40 and you see this behind you, you know to move because this car now has 1,000 newton meters of torque and 727 horsepower, allowing it to do zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Top speed of 155 miles an hour. But if you get the M driver's pack, that goes up to 189 miles an hour. As we go to the side of the car, let's point out the most obvious feature, something that a lot of people have been avoiding talking about, but it is the fact that this car is the first ever hybrid BMW M5. So it has an 18.7 kilo what our battery providing for 42 mile range well around 42 miles of range um, and electric only but not many people will probably be using it for that what you really want that for is the performance so it gives you that extra boost and that instant jolt off the line it takes about three hours to charge on a 7.2 kilowatt hour battery charger um, they said that later on in the future they will possibly be introducing in a faster charger that will allow you to charge at 11 kilowatt hours hybrid is cool and everything but um, we're not in it as petrol heads for the efficiency we're pretty much in it for the performance as we go around to the rear you can see the wonderful smoked tail lights when you unlock the car they glow and then driving around the road they have this light signature you also get this m5 specific carbon design pack which gives you this carbon spoiler you also get this carbon ring but it also follows the lines down to the front just like there so um, it ties in pretty well and with the carbon pack you also get these carbon wing mirrors as well the car is gorgeous it looks super super aggressive especially when you look at it from the side and you see how much wider it is than the regular um, 5 series or the i5 um, speaking of i5 because this car shares the same platform with the i5 it means that they can now install the battery underneath the cabin instead of in the rear like you get in a lot of hybrid cars that means better weight distribution and better performance the car's wheelbase again is longer so that means that when you go over things like potholes or when you're just cruising down road there will be better suspension damping speaking of suspension you now have a dual wishbone front suspension and you have a five point multi-link rear suspension providing you again with that comfort but also performance when you need it as you go around to the rear you have true tailpipes for once in the automotive industry bmw seems to be the only company that puts genuine size tailpipes on the car so these are 100 millimeters each and they are real and there's four of them so um you know what kind of power is under the hood regardless of if it's on or not you do want to see this car in person the global launch is at goodwood festival of speed um we're here in advance taking a preview look and it, it looks great here but a festival of speed you'll be able to get your hands on the car well not on the car but you can get your eyes on the car and take a look around and you probably understand what i mean when i say that it's a hybrid twist on the m5 design it just looks like very modern and it just looks very sophisticated again i love it i think bmw are taking designs um boldly into the right direction where a lot of car manufacturers are kind of dulling down their designs making them as simple as possible bmw seems to be one of the early brands that are still daring and are still exciting so every single bmw that comes out whether it's the xm or the ix there's something new, there's something different, there's something controversial to speak of. And people tend to, at first, say they don't like it, but once they see it on the road, they love it. Similar to like what happened with my BMW i7. When I first saw it, I wasn't sure, but now it's one of my favorite cars and I think it's very good looking. It's the exterior. Um, what I want to do now is jump inside and take you guys through it. As an owner of a car with a similar interior with a BMW i7, I'm very accustomed to it. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the tips and tricks I know about the interior and some of the quirky features that they have in there. Let's jump in. Interior of the new M5 comes with this M-specific steering wheel that I want to start. It's got a flat bottom now, so it provides you with that more aggressive, more um, to racy feel as you go along. You also have your M1 and M2 buttons and a red indicator at the center of the steering wheel at the top. You also get this wraparound ambient light display that provides you with, again, more aggression and more interest. It just feels really luxurious in here. The, the start button on the car is now red, um, harking back to the performance of the car. When everything is on, you're greeted by this M-specific display and M specific sound. Um, the text on the infotainment, interesting enough, uh, the font has changed from regular BMW. So it is all again M specific now. So this is the official BMW M font. As we go in here, we have the new iDrive system, iDrive 8.5. It is configured in an M format. So the first thing you're greeted with is all your M options where you can change things like 
the exhaust sound, the brake feel, steering, suspension, and now for the first time ever, we can change the hybrid powertrain settings on a BMW M5. Again, the center console is very M specific, so you have the M logo in here. You also have now your M hybrid mode, traction control is highlighted with red, M mode, which allows you to change the engine and the performance of the car and set up that allows you to go even more in depth with the settings in the car. You also have this new gearbox design here so all you do now is you put your front and brake and you select your drive there's no longer a gear stick which some people may miss but i don't think is needed in this generation especially with a lot of hybrid cars now no one's really needing a gear stick anymore because they're just there for design everything's electronic now you also have your m specific paddles on the rear of the steering wheel these are highlighted in red and the one on the left has a boost feature so when you're in electric mode only if you pull down here you will in fact start the engine or if you push down on the accelerator going to kick down the engine will start so you're not always stranded with electric mode which is an issue that i felt in a lot of hybrid cars sometimes you want to make a quick getaway and then you put your foot on the accelerator but it's only in electric mode and then you may be at a roundabout or you may be trying to join the motorway and the engine isn't quick enough to come on but in this model you will be able to do that at the touch of a button the car again features iDrive 8.5 which comes with this curved display it's very clear it's very easy to understand it takes a while to get into it a uh, while to get accustomed to it but like many good operating systems you can't learn everything on day one these being more like phones than cars now these are infotainment systems these operating systems have so many features that you will have to play around with a lot of journalists um, i've seen in the past say things like but all the infotainment's overwhelming, it's, it's cluttered, it has its issues, but I think it's great. It works fine for me in my i7. I've never had an issue with it. It's just that you have to live with it for a few days just to get used to where everything is and to get used to how everything operates. The new M specific seats still light up and still provide you with an adequate amount of bolstering so you feel secure when you're driving around, whether you're on track or on the road, but they also feel very, very comfortable. And that's something that's important in something like the BMW M5, because this is a car you should be able to take on track, but you should be able to take on a three, four hour drive across country if you need to in the rear you have tons of space you have isofix seats were a big important point for me um, especially carrying around my son the front hasn't got isofix but i think it's an option on this car um, there's enough space back here to get three adults uh, or should i say two adults and one very small person in the middle um, but it's comfortable enough this seat is in my driving position as you can see once i hop in i can fit both of my knees unlike in certain other cars and then I also have access to my own personal climate control system and then if we go over here you can see that the passengers also get their very own sunshade which is cool it would have been nice if that was automatic but um in the in the sake of saving weight bmw have chosen to go with manual ones speaking of saving weight bmw have um made the heaviest m5 of all time here yeah? this is a 2.5 or just under 2.5 tons now um a lot of people will probably try and criticize that but i understand exactly why that is now with changing regulation it means that a lot of safety equipment have to be put in the car now and then with the hybridization of the m5 as well that 18.7 kilowatt hour battery is heavy it won't be like but what you sacrifice in weight you gain in performance with 1000 newton meters of torque and 727 horsepower providing a 0 to 60 time of 3.5 seconds some may say oh that is slower than the previous generation car but we have to remember that the previous generation car went through many iterations before it got to that speed so expect faster versions potentially to come down the line and this is bmw so you can trust that this car will exceed the expectation so i wouldn't be surprised if this does 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds but as we pop the hood now um i just want to take a look at the 4.4 liter v8 engine sitting in here and it looks glorious i was just saying to some of the guys right here there's no space in here at all for anything else you can barely get your hand in it's like they've really just packed everything as tightly as possible in the sake of weight distribution and i guess space saving to allow the cabins have enough space for the passengers um the total output for the engine and the powertrain in general is 727 horsepower or 535 kilowatts you also have the combustion engine alone which provides 585 horsepower or 430 kilowatts and the electric motor provides 197 or 145 kilowatts the peak torque of the engine is 1000 newton meters that is like a headline figure something that hasn't been achieved in five before and something that's very notable and the combustion engine alone provides up to 750 newton meters with the electric motor 208 it's a high revving engine for a turbocharged engine so the max rpm is 7200 rpm um it's gonna sound crazy um i'm i'm not sure if i'm allowed to start it up but i might just do it anyway so um a startup sound here we come
So that is the new BMW M5. It's an exciting step in performance and efficiency, a generalization of what hybrids should be. Um, it's interesting to see what this car will be like on track, on the road, and I'm excited to take it out to see what the magicians at BMW have worked on to make sure that this car, despite its increased weight, still performs like an M5. But judging on the looks alone and the sound, I think this is an incredible car. I think it's gonna define the next generation of M enthusiasts and potentially be one of the most memorable M5s of all time. Um, but for now, the new BMW M5.